Hey, what's up guys? Scruffy Beard McGee here, and today counts eight weeks since I have been able to get a fresh fade on my fine do, but you know, we're all trying to live through these difficult times, so I'm just gonna keep on pushing on and embrace the scruff. Today we have got a couple of news topics in the world of PC gaming as well as computer hardware, finally. It's been, I feel like, weeks since we've had some proper hardware news to discuss on this channel because of everything that's going on in the world. Things are being delayed, the news cycles are extremely slow, except for things concerning obvious, well, things that I won't mention because I, I kind of like making money on my videos sometimes, so we're not going to go there. But today we're going to be talking about Zen 3 for desktop and when we could expect to see those released. Also, we've got some new info on Intel Comet Lake, the 10,000 series, when we can expect to see those and some new information that's come to light about the TDP as well as the extremely high temperatures of the new Intel CPUs on 14 nanometer plus plus Plus, and also, will CD Projekt Red long-awaited Cyberpunk 2077 futuristic RPG be delayed even further because of what's going on in the world? But first, today's video is brought to you by MMORC.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro, which you can get for just $15, as well as Office 2019 Pro and Office 365 and if you act right now you can get an additional 27% off with my code JOK27 at checkout and that'll knock the price down on Windows 10 Pro from $15.29 all the way down to $11.16 and of course they accept a wide variety of payment from PayPal to credit cards to Bitcoin so be sure to act now and hit up the links down in the description below. So first up, let's talk about Zen 3, which over the past few years, Zen processors have typically released around this time, this point of the year, usually around spring, is when we expect to see them. Some people thought we might see them around June. However, we've got some new information that we'll be seeing the new Zen 3 processors around September. This rumor is coming from DigiTimes, which is under a paywall, so it's a little bit difficult to get access to it. And this is being reported over on videocards.com, where they say Ryzen 4000 series for desktop was expected to launch around September and that this rumor launch collides with the new date for Computex, which is now shifted to September 28th, which usually would run around June, and that's kind of where we get a lot of the big announcements, but because of what's going on, um, yeah, it's been delayed until September 28th, so it looks like we may now be seeing Ryzen 4000 series around that point in time. Video Cards goes on to say that there are some rumors that AMD was originally planning to launch Ryzen 4000 at Computex in June, but computer-based sources confirmed that this was never the case and the series was not expected sooner than July. And this kind of lines up with what Lisa Su had kind of said earlier on during Analyst Day, that we wouldn't see it until the later half of 2020. So for people that kind of pay attention to all the different news that's going on in the hardware space, this may not come as a much of a surprise to you. And it kind of sounds legit that we probably won't be seeing these processors until sometime in September at the very earliest. Obviously with everything going on right now, I have to imagine that this is halting pretty much everything in terms of production in the countries that are in charge of that and then also here in the states and other countries that are handling things like marketing packaging you know you name it design testing pretty much everyone around the world right now is kind of on a lockdown more or less you know depending on country state and all of that so it's impacting everyone so it makes sense that if they have fewer people on hand in to be able to work on this and manufacture it and all of those things that i previously mentioned um, you know, it doesn't sound like it would probably be coming anytime soon. And honestly, if it even comes out in September, I would, I'm still honestly surprised and quite impressed by that, honestly, that they could even get it out this year with everything that's happening. So yeah, hopefully we will see it in September. So the early report is saying Zen 3 is pretty darn impressive. It looks like we're going to see probably another 10 to 15% IPC improvement over Zen 2, so we'll just have to wait and see if we get any further information on that. Switching gears over to the blue team, we've got some information regarding Comet Lake, which is now rumored to be launching at the end of April, and these CPUs, including the 10,900K, which is rumored to be a, well, it's pretty much confirmed, I think, at this point, uh, a 10 core 20 thread CPU on the 14 nanometer plus 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 fabrication. That's right, Intel is still on 14 nanometer. So this information shouldn't come as much as, as a surprise to you since they are still doing 14 nanometer and they're trying to cram 10 cores 
into the same package that they are going to be pushing out some serious heat. Even the 9900K is running extremely hot. Um, the current rumors for TDP are confirmed. Actually, this is actually confirmed, this part of it. Not necessarily the temperatures are rumored, but as far as the TDP is concerned, the low end is around... 170 watts, while 224 watts would be under maximum conditions. So your average TDP under all cord loads looks to be 170 watts, whereas the P2 number of 224 watts is at the absolute thermal threshold. So it could be a max of 224 watts on these 10 core CPUs. And in regards to the temperatures, it's reported over on Guru 3D that the temperature under load reached 90 degrees Celsius range with a normal air cooler and seems to be hitting around 80 degrees with a liquid cooling solution. And we don't have any confirmation as to what exact coolers they were using on this, but these numbers sound to be about accurate. I mean, like even on the 9900K that I'm running right now, if I, you know, I have it on a liquid cooler, I've had it on a 360 millimeter water cooler since day one. And when I initially had it running at just stock settings, I could easily see my temperatures hit around 80 degrees Celsius. So to see that on a 10 core CPU is really no surprise to me personally. The only reason I'm able to get my temperatures down below 60 degrees Celsius in normal gaming and usually just maybe above 60, 60 to 65 Celsius under full workloads, like when rendering a 4K video, is because I have undervolted my CPU and locked the frequency at a solid 4.8 gigahertz because I found the performance gains at 5 gigahertz to really be negligible where it required it a fair bit more voltage to be able to sit at 5 gigahertz stably. Meanwhile, I've been sitting at that 4.8 for well over a year now and I'm able to keep my voltage at 1.8. 22 volts while at stock settings on my motherboard i would usually see the voltage hit up to 1.4 volts and obviously the temperatures would be insane as a result of that so i've opted to slightly down clock my cpu because it allowed me to put in a massive undervolt on my 9900k and keep it very rock solid stable whether i'm rendering videos or playing games i can keep this thing very cool at around 60 degrees celsius on a water cooler, where as opposed to, you know, running stock or even overclocking at over five gigahertz, the voltage I would have needed would have been ridiculous. So that's why I choose to keep it where I keep it. You've probably seen me do it in benchmark videos. You're like, why are you running at 4.8? It's because of the temperatures. And I have a feeling that with these 10,000 series CPUs, that's really not going to be any different. And if you can get one of these processors, it might be a good idea to run it like at a solid five gigahertz or maybe a little under that if you can lower your voltage considerably. Um, so that's probably what I would do, honestly, if I get one of these CPUs, because usually like that little like 200 megahertz change is going to be extremely negligible, whether it be for gaming or multi-threaded workloads. And last up, but certainly not least, I wanted to talk about a much anticipated project from CD Projekt Red. That's, of course, Cyberpunk 2077, one of the first title they've been doing um, since working on the Witcher series, which I have absolutely loved. Of course, a lot of you guys love it as well. Probably some of you even found my channel because of some of my content surrounding uh, the Witcher 3. Absolutely love their games. I love what CD Projekt Red does as a company as far as not including microtransactions or um, invasive DRM or anything like that. You know, they own GOG. So CD Projekt Red is honestly a, 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 a I would say S tier in terms of a game developer publisher. They are straight up S tier um, as far as I am concerned. Probably the best out there that I trust more than any other developer or publisher in the gaming industry. Uh, so yeah, Cyberpunk 27, I would say that I'm extremely excited about. Now, obviously this game was originally slated to come out on April 16th, but they had to delay it until September 17th. And that's not anything to do with what we're seeing happening right now. According to the developer, it was actually, the game was actually ready and completely playable, but they wanted to do some more work to further polish it, probably improve things like optimizations, really bug check the game to make sure it is in its best possible state when it comes out. So we're not sitting here waiting for like patches weeks later, like we see other developers and publishers. And that is another one of the reasons why I would uh, rank them so high as a developer is because they want to have a polished pr uh, game when it comes out fully complete. So people aren't mad and pissed off at them. Like we saw with something like Rockstar and Red Dead Redemption 2 when that game came out and it still has performance issues to this day. It's not perfect by any means riddled with microtransactions, a lot of, um, you know, angst and people being pissed off about Red Dead Redemption 2, even though the game itself is absolutely incredible. Um, they just did a shitty job with the PC port 
of that game, but I have no doubts that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be fantastic. Um, quoting CD Projekt Red in regards to um, why they think the game will not be delayed any further past September, even with what's going on in these troubling times, they said, Our goals haven't changed, CD Projekt Red CEO Adam Kaczynski tells investors in the company's latest financial report. First and foremost, we intend to release Cyberpunk 2077 in September. We feel motivated and have the necessary tools at our disposal to meet this goal. We also believe that our long-standing strategy of avoiding debt and accumulating cash reserves makes us well prepared to meet any hardships which may be in store during these troubled times. So there you have it directly from their CEO. They are prepared and ready to push forward and keep working on Cyberpunk 2077 and hit that launch date in September. So thankfully, yeah, we won't have to wait any longer past that unless they see something unforeseen. But, you know, as I said, they already had this game finished in April. Uh, well, not in April. It's, they haven't hit the actual April date yet, but this was delayed back in, I believe it was February um, they decided to delay the game so that they could polish it a little bit further rather than releasing it in, well, it would be about a week from today, honestly. So, yeah, awesome stuff to hear that we're going to be seeing it this year. They're working on the best title possible, and I cannot wait to see what they have to do, uh, have to, you know, put out there with Cyberpunk 2077. I think you guys are probably in the same boat as well. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, though. That's all I've got for you guys today, but please leave me your thoughts, opinions, comments, everything down in the comments below as I look forward to uh, reading through those. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything new, leave a thumbs up on it, subscribe if you're not already, and if you've been here for a while, consider ringing the notification bell. That way you never miss a moment of content as soon as I upload it live here on the channel. I'm not sure why I paused there. I lost my words for a second. I'm going to go, though, and I will uh, catch you guys tomorrow for another video.